Hello and welcome to today's Just Shopping Podcast. And today with my David and myself, we have Rob Weir from Tigers of Pantang. How's it going, Rob? Hello? Can you hear me or not? Oh, you, you broke up. Oh. I can. You broke up. Yeah, you just just as you were doing your big intro there, it, it went. You, you went into Dalek mode. Oh, okay. All right, then do you want me to introduce you again? Yes, please. Okay, <laughs> we have Rob Weir from Tigers of Pantang. Old school rock and roll band started in what, How you 19, doing? 1978, was it, Rob? 78, yeah, it sounds, yeah, it sounds about right, yeah. It's a long time ago. Tiger started in 78, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 would, I was playing before then, but um, yeah. How old were you when you started playing guitar then? Oh, or probably about 11, maybe. Oh, okay, started young then. Yeah, 11 or 12, yeah. I, I still haven't got the hang of it. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I mean, David and myself are smart. My dad about... was a doctor, and, and, and doctors, you know, they 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 go into they, they practice, don't they? And uh, it's 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 much the same with my guitar player. I'm still practicing. Yeah, yeah. Well, to be honest, I think you learn all the time, don't you, with a guitar? You do, of course, you do. Well, of course I you do, think yeah. that's with everything, but yeah, you know, I don't think it's. I think it's an an instrument that you'll never really master. I guess. No, I, 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 no, and, and I think if you could say, well, I, 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 I can't learn anymore, then I think probably it's time to move on to the flute or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think if you say that's you... what you need to do, Ted. That's what you need to do. You need to pick up the flute now. No, I'm fucking always learning. <laughs> I'm learning to play Apache now with a shadow. So very good. You know, on the flute. <laughs> no, <laughs> on the guitar. <laughs> I can, I can play it on the recorder. <laughs> while, do, while doing the three-step walk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I've seen you... Oh, I've, I've seen... I've seen my words get tongue-tied now. I've seen you being through several lineup changes in your long uh, career of Tigers. Uh, it has indeed. Has every band, yes. Oh, I don't know about that, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Rolling Stones and... Uh... <laughs> I mean, they've had a couple of members in and out, but I mean, well, well, you, well, every, everybody has. I think uh, there, there are probably you can probably count on your hand uh, uh, how many bands have remained absolutely original. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and you know, ha, ha, you can probably what what sometimes does fascinate me is bands that still tour that don't have any original members in the band, and I think and I think how can you do that? Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's a funny one, isn't it? You know, I mean, I saw a, a guy the other day, and he was a sing- singer for Hot Chocolate. It came right. up on, on my Facebook as I can't remember his name now, bless him. But he, well, the singer for Hot Chocolate was Errol Brown, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah he died, didn't he? he yeah, he, I think he died of cancer, didn't he? Yeah, a few years ago. Yeah, and um, then this guy popped up on my Facebook, and he said he was the singer for Hot Chocolate, and I was like, huh? that's a bit strange. I thought Errol Brown died. So I looked into into his background, and he's been singing with them since maybe I don't know how long ago did Al Brown die? Two thousand. Oh, it's a good few years ago. Yeah, yeah, and I think this guy joined the band like I don't know, two thousand twelve or something. I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. But yeah, I mean, he looks the part, bald, black, but uh, <laughs> I don't know what he sounds like to be honest. <laughs> can you can you say that word? What word? Bald. Oh. Yes. <laughs> That's why I've got a hat on. <laughs> you, you, have to be, you have to be careful what you say these days. Yeah, you do, yeah, so we keep finding out. But <laughs> Yeah, we've got, a, we've got a bit of a section on that, a few afterwards as well. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happening with the band, mate, now? Tigers. Um, we have, um, as you rightly said, we have a new guitar player, which... We um, welcomed last year uh, Francesco Maris. He is a Sardinian, uh, born uh, born in Sardinia, lives in um, East uh, Western Germany, um, about f- half an hour from the um, Dutch border. Um, we've tried several times to fly him over um, to say hello, have a glass of wine with him. Um, even have a rehearsal with them for God's sake that would be novel um, and it just hasn't happened so um, 
we've managed to write uh, the next album together um, without even clapping eyes on them, um, which is <laughs> quite, uh, quite um, yeah, uh, different in these strange times that we live in. Um, what happens if you don't like him? Put it in. <laughs> what happens if you don't like him? <laughs> you write an album and you might not get on with him, no? Uh, no, I, I don't even want to go there, really, Craig. Um, of course, it could go the other way. He, he could say to you know, he could say to me, um, you know, your fart stink, and I can't. I can't. <laughs> uh, which they do, by the way. Uh, but um, um, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, the Craigie. Uh, uh, all, all we can go on is. I mean, I've spoken. I, I speak to him every week. Mm. Uh, on, on the telephone, you know, um, Jack, our Italian singer, um, has recently, um, uh, well, I think it was last year, he joined um, a German band called Sainted Sinners. Frank Payne being the guitar player, who's a friend of ours. Um, and um, they were recently playing, uh, I think two or three nights ago, they were playing in Germany and uh, Francesco went, you know, went down to the show. Um, so Jack has a, a distinct advantage um, over Craig, Hugh, and I of um, <laughs> of, 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 of meeting our um, our new hotshot guitar player. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is, his guitar his guitar player is is phenomenal. Um, he's a he's a, a, a pro musician, uh, lucky enough to make his full time occupation. Um, you know, um, as a guitar player. Mm. Playing with his G-string, yeah, which which is you know that's that's something in itself, really. Um, yeah. um, and um, I, I, I tip me hat to him, you know. I, yeah. I managed to do it for a little while, but um, you know, it's so. I have to I tell you one thing: with playing, you know, when we go out and we play big festivals and things like that, the next morning when we're down having breakfast, uh, you know, and, and various artists come in that have, that have been appearing on the bill. It never ceases to amaze me how many, how many um, of, of the artists um, can't make a living, you know, playing, uh, playing rock and roll, which, yeah. which, which, which greatly saddens me, but, uh, but, but also um, that fascinates me, um, you know, that, that, that these, and when they say, oh, I'm a whatever, you know, um, I'm a nose surgeon, you know. I'm, I'm a, you know, um, a bum fluff um, collector, and you think, wow, that's, um, you know, I, I, because you you just don't expect it. You you just and and the, the, these are the, these are some quite prominent, you know, bands um, with long long standing musicians, and it's just sad, uh, and that's, I suppose that's, maybe it's always been like that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, is it? Yeah, I was going to ask you. Do you think it's more of a kind of like a modern thing, or you know, yeah, back in the seventies? Was I, it so much then, or? I think so. I, I, sorry, I'm going to turn away from the camera so I can have a slip of my wine. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Um, Cheers. I'm drinking. I'm drinking a rather nice uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. Um, I don't drink. Yeah, I don't drink lager. Um, I'm a bit of a bit of a Jack Daniels fan but I'm a wino really so um, <laughs> that's my my tipple uh, grapes uh, uh, you know it's one of your five a day so get it down that's your neck it. that's what I say that's it <laughs> that's one way of looking at it yeah um, yeah so, so yeah but well, it's the only way to look at it um, <laughs> <laughs> um and uh, recently um uh Gav Gray the bass player um left the band, uh, you know, saying that he was really kind of fed up with touring and um, uh, just f f falling out of love of touring and, and, that, and that kind of thing. Um, and and we, uh, we welcomed a, a, a local um, bass player, um, not the Gavs, not what wasn't local, but Hugh is, is local as well, um, uh, called Hugh Holding. Uh, so we've, Craig, uh, the Tigers drummer, and Hugh and I have uh, rehearsed together uh, on several occasions um so um we're getting ourselves ready for when the time comes uh, yeah. if it ever if it ever comes back for goodness sake um because before we do any shows anyway we're going to have to have two full full-on days 
of rehearsals, um, you know, the five of us. Um, At least, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah, because, you know, we're, we're, we haven't even bloody met. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it, it's, it's quite surreal, to be honest yeah. with you. But um, Francesco is um, the kind of guitar player that um, will know the songs better than me. You know, um, he'll be he'll be saying to me, "Well, you, th that song that you wrote, um, you played the chords this way," and I'll and I'll say to him, "Oh, did I? Show, show me show me how how, how it goes." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Pass so, me another wine. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely, yes. Um, you just show me those chords before you drink any wine, because. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so that um, th that's we've recorded an EP, um, which I was very keen to get a couple of new songs out there um, with Francesco on them to to show the world uh, our new guitar player and um, uh, you know get everybody to to welcome them you know amongst the uh, the ranks. Um, so there are two new songs and we recorded two old songs and I asked Francesco one of the first things I asked him was what do, what do you what if you had to pick you know one or two songs from Wildcat um you know our first release in 1980 um what would you pick um and he, he said he said um 100% killers um and probably fire clown as well um so okay. we've we've re-recorded those um uh they have the, they have the same they have the same vibe as as 1980, but we've modernised them. Okay. Uh, and, and of course, we're you know we're 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 40 years plus technology. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we, we we were able to make them sound modern and bigger. Um, and um, there's a couple of little things in there that um, are are a bit different, um, mm -hmm. but in keeping with the song. Mm -hmm. You know, it it doesn't go into a, a, a you know a a jazz fusion rock, um, yeah, yeah, reg yeah. Reg reggae section in the yeah. middle eight. You know, a bit of prog it, rock. <laughs> yeah, it's still, still uh, it, you know, it, it it still slices your head off. So yeah, it's it's, and I'm, I'm it, it's it's um it's going to be a four track EP. Uh, it's going to be called a new heartbeat because the single the the, the lead song is called a new heartbeat. Okay. Um, which is very relevant because we've got two new guys in the band and that, that you know that the heart is beating. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember my first Tigers of Pantang single, actually. Okay. Was uh, Love Potion number nine. Right. And I had actually had the the seven inch vinyl with the 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 tiger climbing up the post office tower. Crazy nights. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what. Crazy nights album. Eighty one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I bet that single will be worth a fortune now. If you've got one of the originals, there were, there were originally we had a thousand press. Neat, Neat Records had a thousand press, and they were in a kind of a um, a, um, a matte cardboard sleeve. Okay. If you've got one of those, um, they're selling for two hundred pounds plus. Oh, yeah, that's not bad, is it? Mm. Um, when we when when we moved to MCA, um, they pressed up fifty thousand. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of a shiny um, gloss, same cover, but the finish was shiny and gloss. Um, uh, and if you've got one of those, uh, they're probably worth about <sighs> threepence in old money. Yeah, I was going to say about three pound fifty. Yeah. <laughs> well, so you just won a, an award, so I have to congratulate you on that. Thank you very much. Yes, that was um, quite out of the blue. Um, and um, thoroughly enjoyable to go and pick up. Um, I, I did want, uh, and and um, other men, and members of the band were asked uh, a bit far f for Jack uh, to fly in um, with all this COVID stuff because I'm sure he would have come, you know, uh, and Francesco. Yeah. Um, Craig was poorly, um, and uh, Hugh just, you know. Um, there wasn't enough time for him to organise himself, uh, um, and I was going to go with Tom, our manager, 
Uh, and the day the award was on a Wednesday, I think, on, on the Tuesday, um, he rang me and said, You've ne you never guess what, I've got a consultant's appointment, uh, and the oh. only time they can do it is tomorrow. Yeah, oh, nightmare. Uh, so I made the five and a half hour drive by myself uh, from Newcastle to Great Yarmouth, um, but um, w well worth it, I have to say. It was a, it was a proper red carpet event, um, okay. and... Um, yeah, uh, the, the the four nominations came up: um, Diamond Heads, Angel Witch, uh, Vardis, and Tigers. And um, the lovely um, listeners um, voted as top of the tree. So, um, absolutely massive shout out to everybody who you know took the time and the trouble to do that. Yeah. yeah. So, what was the award for exactly? Come on. Um, New Wave of British Heavy Metal category. Yeah. Okay. I was right. Was, yeah, 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 I knew what it was. was but... their, um... It had the letters in, and I was working it out. I said, it's got to be that. It's got to be that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was, that's, that's exactly what it was for. So, yeah. Um, j j j and and it's, uh, it, was, it was filmed for Prime, 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 uh, Amazon Prime. Oh, okay. Oh, so, so it's so Amazon Prime, Prime, is it? It will be. So, so it'll be out, it, it'll be out um, at some stage, I, I'm guessing, next year. Oh, cool. I'll have to keep my eye out for that. Yeah. 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 Did some of the uh -huh. old uh, members turn up? Of Tigers. No, no, there was no. Unfortunately, there, there was just me. Ah, oh, right, okay. That's a bit of a shame, isn't it? Just, just me. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, but yeah, that's it. That's just I, I was sat next to um, Chantel McGregor. She won an award for best guitar player. So um, it was a, it was a bit of a winning table. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's always a bit of a shame when past members. I mean, I don't know how they feel about, you know, not being in the band anymore, but yeah, it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's, I think it's just a shame. I mean, you, it, over the years, you put out music together and then, you know, somebody doesn't want to be mates with someone else. And, and it's like, oh, just let bygones be bygones, man. Life's too short. It, it is, absolutely. You know, I don't yeah. know what sort of troubles that you had uh, all through the years. Because I did see one incarnation of the band where you weren't, there was no original members in it. Um, no, well, um, no, uh, yeah, well, that was Brian, the drummer. Oh, okay. um, yeah, it, it, yes, um, but yes, that was a, that, that that was a strange, a strange happening. But um, I'd I'd kind of left the music, almost left the music business by then, uh, feeling very disenchanted. So yeah, yeah. Um, I think they recorded two albums on, on on like a budget label and did a few shows, and then it all just. Um, petered out yeah 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 it's the same sort of thing i mean we spoke to rocky shades like a long time ago now mm. from rothschild you know yeah and uh, yeah we were talking to him about all the trials and tribulations of people wanting to own this and people wanting to own that you know and yeah it just gets really messy it does it does um the tigers have had a great manager um you know that's been um more or less there all the time he's he certainly managed me for 43 years okay. um so he just eat it bloody hell he deserves a medal mm -hmm. um and and he's uh he he had a, a bit of a break but he's back managing the band now and uh he's you know if anybody's the backbone of the operation um tom is you know he's um uh, you know does things above and beyond the call of duty really um and it's 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 great to know that somebody's got your back if you know yeah, what i mean yeah. 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 Uh, it it takes, um, it just takes an awful lot of the, the the stress and the worry out of things. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, if you can just leave it to someone else. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and yeah. Blaze said that, didn't he? Blaze Bailey, done he? Because when we interviewed Blaze, he didn't even deal with the money. He said he wants nothing to do with the money. He doesn't organise any of the tour dates. He he just turns up and they tell him where to go. That's kind of <laughs> like what happens, you know, if they if they make. You, a record he turns up at the studio and if they go to a show he turns up at the show so he, he said i don't nothing what's going on and it works for him so uh, yeah, yeah he said it works best for him because uh, yeah he said once he starts handling money it all goes out the window <laughs> yeah. um yeah we, we, we have a great network you know we have a great record company uh it's a, it's a um a danish company called target records um with a great CEO um, who, who we, you know, we get on so well with Michael Anderson. Um, uh, he's a great press department. Uh, Fernando looks after our press for us, and um, uh, I, in fact, I, I don't know whether whether he organised this. 
uh, but he's uh, he's really, uh, you know, on the money. Um, is Fernando? Well, I'll tell you, organise this. We did. Oh. <laughs> you and me, Rob. Because <laughs> I did actually message. Um, I messaged your management. Um, going. I mean, we've been doing this podcast now for six months, I think. Yeah. Okay. And I right. was in touch with uh, with your manager when we Tom. first. Yeah, when we first started, and we were going to set it up then, but something happened, and I don't know what happened altogether. But then uh, I created a new Facebook account, the Just Chops in Facebook account, and which a friend did you on, and then we just spoke on uh, Facebook, and, uh, and then we set it up this way. Okay. So uh, right, okay, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Well, well, yeah. I mean, well, as, as I say, we've got a great now. We've got a great agent. Uh, is a D- Dutch agency called the Turner Rock Agency, um, and. We're very, very lucky to to be set up very, very well. Okay. Where is he based then? Because I'm based in Holland myself. Uh, Ludi lives um, on the uh, Dutch-Belgian border in... Uh... Lommel? In where, sorry? Lommel? No. Um... Harpet? You, uh, no. No. That's the only two I can think of. <laughs> oh God! It it it's it's kind of down in the in the southeast corner. Uh, is that near Maastricht and that? Is it Maastricht? Oh right, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. That's where it lives. <laughs> oh okay. Oh yeah, that's that's about I don't know an hour and a half drive from me, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you you can you can literally walk from his house across the border. Yeah, yeah. Well, where I live, I live sort of like in a little, they call it the triangle, because I'm like 45 minutes from Germany and 45 minutes from Belgium. So it's just like a little triangle, you know, so you can get there easily enough either, either side. But but yeah, like you were saying earlier, you were supposed to be coming to Holland, but um, it's not looking very good for you, mate. Oh, God. Um, yeah. Well, as I say, we had, we had four, four, four English shows, which would have broken the ice with, it, with you know, with, with the new boys. Um, but unfortunately, Craig, our drummer, um, who's double jabbed, so it just goes to show you can be double jabbed and still catch COVID. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, you're going to catch it regardless, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and whatever you call it, you know, it, it does. It, whatever it is, you know, because there are people that don't think it exists. Well, something exists because <laughs> people are, people are, people are testing positive for for God's sake. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so whatever, whatever, whatever we're going to call it, Craig tested positive, positive for it. Yeah, um, yeah. So of course that was five days before we're due to go out. Um, and of course we'd already bought the the the, the piece, uh, PCR tests. Yeah. Um, yeah. For for, for um, Jack and Francesco coming into the country, so all all that money went down the drain. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the flight money, uh, it just it just became a bit a bit of a nightmare. So we're edging, uh, airing on the side of caution, um, booking flights to come out to Europe, uh, and of course, you know, uh, Holland's gone into this sort of half lockdown. Yeah. Uh, Austria's gone into a full lockdown, I think. Yeah. Germany's certainly talking about it. Yeah, I think um, German Germany's banning the Dutch at the moment. Oh right, okay. So I don't think right. we can go over the border. I think right. they can come over here, but I don't think we can go over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's already a sold out show in Paris. Um, on the, I think it's on the 15th of January. And I, I, you know, I, I'm hoping upon all hope it's all going to go ahead, but who knows? Yeah, yeah. yeah I said. Who knows? Yeah, there's a, bit of, oh, well, there's a bit of a mess over here. So I don't, I'm not sure if France is still okay, but um, yeah. But, oh, well. Things are changing, but day by day, you know, it's... they are. They are. So they might be okay for the time being, but who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, in 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 the run up to Christmas and yeah. Christmas itself, you know, people want to go out and party and have a good time, which is which is fair enough. When you know, um, but that that in itself is you know allegedly going to cause uh, you know a spike. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think they've um, banned New Year again over here. Have they really? Yeah, they banned it last year and banned. Like you, you were only like yeah. four people in your house at Christmas or whatever, mm-hmm. and then all the New Year celebrations were banned, fireworks are banned, um, yeah, so it's all fucked up again. 
Not good, is it? <laughs> I mean, the shows you've got in February, then, because I've seen you go on in Norwich. Is that are they the rearranged shows from October, or are they different shows again? You're dragging, Rob. Ooh. You froze. You catch up, Rob? No. They're, they're, they're different. Pardon? I, I, I wasn't sure if you caught that because you, they're, cause they're, you froze on us. Yeah, yeah, no, I did. Yeah, no. They're, they're, they're different shows. Oh, okay, okay. So are you looking to rearrange the ones you Yeah, have no, they're different. Shows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we're, we're already um, booked back um, for. Uh, Cornwall Rocks next, whatever it is, September. Um, that 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 that's that's already in the you know in in the, in the the um, the reckoning, um, and the, the the other shows will, will be will be slotted back in uh, for sure. Um, so coming up and coming up in February, I think uh, you you probably have the gig list in front of you. I, I know the, the the opening night is actually in Newcastle. Mm. Um, okay. And then I'm sure we, I'm sure we're taking Norwich, Bradford, uh, somewhere else, and um, I think the final sh um, is the final show. KK Steel Mill with the uh, Diamond Head and um, Rock Goddess, okay. um, and somebody else. Um, okay. Sorry, somebody else. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so are you uh, a Geordie or a Macam? <laughs> Wash your beard out, young man. <laughs> I don't know, do I? <laughs> hey, play, play, Nick. Hey, you know, what are I, you I, then? Dear me, I'm an absolute Geordie. All right, okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know which side of the river you live on. Is it the black river? and white? Same. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're, we're not north of the times. Black and white, the same as your gas monkey T-shirt. Ah, right, cool. Yeah, well, I get you. Never know, do you? you know. Uh, so, well, if, well, you, well, you do now. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> no, it's all right. I can post it out to all my Geordie mates. Then, and, uh, I say we've got a top Geordie on the show. <laughs> to say there's a little bit, to say there's a little bit of rivalry is uh, is an understatement. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Although our football teams don't play, uh, our, our football teams don't play each other anymore because um, the Mackhams are in. Two two leagues below us, but I mean we, we won't we won't go there. <laughs> you might do. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have thought well, so. We that we money that they have invested. Yeah, I, was, I think we've just become the richest club in the world. You so have. Let's uh, let us let us yeah. splash a bit of, let's splash a bit of cash and get uh, you know get 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 somebody in that's um, you know that that can brick up the goal mouth and um, you know sc score some goals at the other end. Yeah, well, maybe you can afford Ronaldo now. They want in. They uh, want the, the young kid from France. What's his name? Oh, no he's idea. Still, he's at PSG, isn't he? If he's on about going to Real Madrid, the, the super um, kid at the I, moment. I'm not sure of the names, but it's insane that you know. Uh, I w I wouldn't call myself a um, you know a, a staunch um, football fan. Football fan. I, I, Obviously, I come from Newcastle, and I like Newcastle to win. And, and and we all get very disappointed if you know if if you know if they don't. But um, yeah, I, I was my, my my daughter wanted to go to Wembley the other night to see England play, um, and my granddaughter, who's coming up fifteen, um, has got a bit bit of a thing for football players, I think. Um, okay. So off off we went to see England. Score five goals, um, and, and that was. I've never been to Wembley before, and, and that that was that was uh, that was a fantastic experience. Mm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, it always is when your team wins, I guess. Wouldn't be so. Wouldn't have been so great if they'd lost five nil. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's <laughs> ever going to be <laughs> any danger. You know, um, I, I, th I think I would have jumped down on the pitch and given my hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but you know what it is that the. the um, uh, 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 a definite nod to the Albanian fans that there were was 80, 80,300 there. Um, the Albanian fans probably had may, maybe 500, maybe maybe a few more. And they had a drum and they, they, they kept beating the drum and, and shouting and chanting. And the the they outshone everybody at Wembley, they, they, they were just absolutely marvelous. Um, when we all 
went into the ground and when we all left the ground, they were all, you know, mingled in amongst all the, there wasn't a bit of bother. Mm. There were, there were absolutely, the whole atmosphere was absolutely fantastic. Oh, that's good to hear, actually. That's that's it it really, really was. That there was no, I didn't even hear anybody swear, for God's sake. Mm. Yeah. Well, well, just, that... just, just, just my daughter. Yeah, I like I wasn't there. <laughs> we're, 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 the, the three of us were sat uh, in the family enclosure because th- they were all the tickets that, that, that were left by the time we got around to buying tickets. And we're sat there and Kerry, my daughter, um, Tia sat in the middle and I, I'm sat on the other end and, and Kerry bends around and she says, Dad, she says, I don't think I should be here. And I said, you don't think you should be there? And she said, no, she says, I'm far too rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, her, but my, let's say my, the other two girls. Every time they scored a goal, they were jumping up and down, and sh- and I'm and I'm sat down thinking to myself, "Oh God, <laughs> proper Geordie girls then." The, yeah, they were they were the fo- football hooligans. Yeah, yeah. God, amazing. Well, I know you've got a job as well, Rob. We were talking about jobs on there. Yeah, people having to work, and you. What do you do exactly? They, they do. I I, I work for um, a train company. Um, uh, which is called LNR. Uh, they're, they are Britain's premier railway. Um, I've worked there for nearly nearly twenty years. Um, great rail, great great people to work for. Um, uh, you know, I, I enjoy going. Oh, there's your boat. Oh, yeah, <laughs> um, she's back. I enjoy going to work every day. Um, I travel uh, most days. I travel from uh, Newcastle uh, up in the northeast to London. Um, oh. and back oh, okay. um, although tomorrow I'm travelling from Newcastle to Edinburgh um, and back um, and that yeah that's that, that you know when, when there's no music and there hasn't been any for nearly two years um, you know that, that pays the bills yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I thought you were an announcer an announcer yeah no 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 I, I make you... an, I make announcements on the train but um, oh okay yeah. Oh, yes. I, I, I make announcements on the train, but I don't. Uh, I'm not I'm not an announcer, uh, per se. <laughs> ah, okay. What, what sort of announcements do you make? Um, uh, oh, just passenger announcements, telling them what what's you know what, what's available. Um, ah, um, right. Okay. Catering wise, and you know yeah, if, yeah. It, if we can help them if they you know um, yeah. if they get into trouble, or telling them you know to behave themselves if they need to behave themselves and you know one thing or another because we carry obviously it's Britain's National Railway so we carry um, all sorts of people from you know Saturday Sunday football um, crowds um, to little old nanas you know yeah, um, yeah. You, you know going to you know on the jollies yeah, yeah. alright cool yeah well obviously then you make announcements there's some things you're not supposed to say to uh, people you, yeah, you well, don't have to tell us what they are, but uh... yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, the, the, in, in this this day and age that we live in, I, one has to be politically correct. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> uh, uh, well, you, you you do when you're you know dealing with the general public, um, uh, because um, there's always somebody sitting, waiting, listening, um, maybe to uh, uh, trip you up. Well, not only that, I think there's always somebody sitting, waiting, waiting, listening to be offended. Uh, well, you, you know? you're probably right. Yes, it, yeah. Uh, and um, I, I saw a tweet the other day um, of a fella who was uh, clearly um, he was um, he was having a laugh and a joke. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and he said. Um, if the guard on the train doesn't say, um, uh, you know, in, in his announcement, um, if he doesn't mention um, Westcox helicopters, he says, "I'll, I, I will be right in, and I'll be, I'll be absolutely furious because I identify as a Wessex helicopter." Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which. Um, Indeed, I, I don't know. I, I don't know on that occasion, you know, whether that was mentioned. Wessex helicopters. It's not often mentioned, I have to say, but yeah, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I do hope that um, that that person uh, wasn't offended. Because um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never mentioned a West, Wessex helicopter. Well, quite yes. Yeah. It's an important thing if you identify as a helicopter. It is. I mean, people identify all sorts of things nowadays, don't they? They do. 
Uh, but as, as long as when they're listening to your show and watching, they identify as rock fans, we're, 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 we're doing well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, Dave, got anything for us? Yeah, well, we've, uh, we've, we've started a new section. Because Terry guess, um, is upset, upset, <laughs> upset about, the, about the word police and about certain words that you're not allowed to say anymore. Okay, so, yes. Well, so we're, yeah. so we're going to select a word every day. So um, Terry did one yesterday. So my word of the day is housewife. Because right, okay. people get offended now being called housewives, apparently. Which I no. I don't understand. Because I was a house husband for six months because I didn't have a job at the time and I was doing all the domestic chores and everything. And then obviously you got like, they call them stay-at-home dads as well, haven't they? So, because I remember being corrected by my wife and she said she was a domestic engineer. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so maybe apparently... she's a domestic engineer then, but is she still a housewife or not? I reckon she's a housewife and I'm a house husband because although we both work and we both work full time, we split it all. Well, we don't, if I'm honest, most of the bloody jobs are blue jobs in our house. And even the pink jobs have got a tinge of blue on them as well. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so that's what we call it. We have, we have pink and blue jobs. But um, so, yeah. So, yeah, I still class her as a, as a housewife. Okay. So who decided that housewives, you can't use the word housewife? I don't know. I don't know. I went on to some dodgy thing in Google. I just typed in Porn bad up. words and it came up <laughs> yeah, for a change. Yeah. And it came up as housewife as being one of them. So I thought that's something I can say and it'd be interesting to see if anybody did get offended. Because okay. most people, I, a lot of, lot of ladies that I know, you know, if they don't work, um, they say they're housewives, but you know, within the within the text of it, it says the sexist, um, and basically pointing to the fact that women, they're women that don't want to work. Or actually, maybe it's single women that don't want to be called housewives because they're not actually housewives, are they? Well, they, yeah. yeah, they wouldn't be, would they? No. So maybe they come up with the idea that we, they were being called housewives, where they're not actually housewives. Maybe stay at home single woman is a bit too long for people to stay home. <laughs> Hang on. S H. <laughs> What's that award you just won, Rob? S H. <laughs> so would they be house singles? I don't know. Maybe. Or, or, or would they be single houses? <laughs> <laughs> well, single houses are detached. They would be detached, yes. Yeah. So maybe the detached domestic engineers. <laughs> domestic potential yeah. potential you've got to put the word potential in the potential engineers because some might not actually um you know get round to it yeah that's right yeah they might be too busy to actually do any housework they, they might be busy trying not to be single domestic engineers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so housewife, yeah. uh, yeah, that's a so, bit of a bizarre one. Do we still have, so I, I'm guessing we don't have maids or butlers then? Oh, I don't know. We'll have to have a look into that. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yeah, I would class that as okay. I definitely don't have a maid or butler. I would. Not me. <laughs> you, could, you couldn't have an au pair, could you? Yeah, Why not? I employed a lady years and years ago who classed herself as being an au pair. Yeah, there's au pairs over here. Right, I'm, I'm just right. D d but does the word pair not not refer to part of their bodily? That's peach in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, w would one say that's a nice pair? <laughs> oh yeah, that's the. I was thinking about the bottom bit. <laughs> no, I, I, and I'm, I'm 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 merely talking about you know if you were fruit shopping. That's you know. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Just so yeah. not to, not to cause any um, you know confrontation, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's 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 a funny old world we live in, and yeah. you know with um, things that you can say and can't say now. When mm -hmm. you know when I was a lad, um, you could pretty much say, um, you know, if something was white, you could say it was white. If something was green, you could say it was green. But yeah. you know now you have to say that's not white. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty confident Alf Garnett's missus was a housewife. <laughs> oh, <laughs> was Alf Garnett a house husband? Did he got did he have a job? I can't remember. No, nah, he was too busy down the pub shouting at people and stuff, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he was way too busy to do any housework, Alf Garnett. <laughs> down the east down the West End. <laughs> was he but, not an ex an ex West Ham manager? I don't know, he could have been, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like i said this is a new section we're doing so i just if anybody has any idea who not oh, bird's gone the the word police actually are i mean they must be out there there has to be an organization that that have called themselves the word police i'd like to know who they are maybe we can get them on the show one time yeah who decides that words aren't correct. Yeah, who decides that these words are that, that, that we can't use them anymore. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. they're wrong. I, I mean, how can they be wrong? Well, yeah, uh, yes. It's it's a yeah. It, it's a it. It's a, it's certainly a big topic, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah. It could it could be linked, mind, because if you go back to like the fifties and sixties, when they had and they used to have housewives on the adverts. <laughs> And they were saying like Ethel with her whites and she had nice soft hands because she used fairy washing up liquid and all that. Maybe it's, it's perhaps, you know, some of those adverts looking back then were quite offensive, really, when you watch them back now in the um, way that they it's just the way that they dramatize the women. And even to the extent where like they weren't clever enough to do things as well on some of the adverts, they were only clever enough to wash your clothes. Well, maybe they weren't that clever. <laughs> Maybe well, that no. particular individual could only do washing up. <laughs> you know, you never know, do you? Yeah. But you, you see, back then, it it wasn't offensive. No. Because if it was, then it would have been offensive back then, and somebody would have said, "You can't call me a, a, a housewife." Yeah. Exactly. Um, but but they didn't. It, it was you know it it was. I think housewives called themselves housewives. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. did. <laughs> I mean, most most of them were probably proud to be a housewife. Yeah, yeah absolutely. My yeah. mum was a was a housewife for a long time, looking after us. It was only when we got a bit older that we could be trusted, and she got herself like a little part time job. But up until that point, you know, she was at home. I'd get up in the morning, she'd get me up, and make my breakfast. I'd go to school. She'd be waiting when we come home from school. We'd have our tea and stuff, and beat me up if I didn't do my own work and what have you, do you know what I mean? So, you know, that was kind of like, that. It's, it sounds awful, but that was kind of like her job, you know, raising raising the kids and keeping the house all right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it's sexist or what, really, I don't know. Equal rights. Yeah, it my dad went out and worked, didn't he? So, you know, if I guess if my mum was working, my dad would have done that job. I it does know. make you wonder what, what's... What, what's What's changed so radically for people to have these opinions? Mm. You know, that these opinions that were, were are completely different to to what we were brought up with. Mm. Um, and, you know, and nobody's saying, who, you know, who's right or who's wrong. But I mean, you know, in you can, gosh, there are so many things. You know, that you, people don't eat salt anymore. You know, because it's bad for you, and they don't. You know, they don't have sugar in the drinks because it's bad for you and they don't have, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still still alive and kicking, you know, I, mm. I, I certainly like to think so. Um, yeah. I'm barely unscathed, you know, in my 60 odd years I've been on the planet. And when I, when I was a kid and I went to the chippy, um, all my chips were cooked in beef dripping. Yeah. But, um, you know, the, you had to, the, they had to turn the fryers on and wait until the fryers had melted the solid, you know, beef dripping or yeah, lard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and you know, I had salt in everything. You know, I had sugar in everything. You know, with, with the the Villa Pop man used to come by as you, you will have your your make. You know, in, in his lorry. And, you know, my mum used to buy, I don't know, you know, buy iron brew and lemonade and you know, coke and whatever. Um, it had the the rubber screw top, and you paid five pence deposit for the bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, the, so you know, they got the bottle back. 
So really, we were recycling back then. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, you yeah. know, but be, before all this, let's save this and let's save that. Mm. You know, we, we we were already doing it. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, take t- 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 me granddad's brown ale bottles back to the shop. You yeah. know, because uh, t- there were there were tuppence on each bottle. Yeah. But what did the shop do with them? They used to send them back to the brown ale factory. They got washed uh, and recycled, and out, out they came again in two weeks' time with bloody brown ale in them. That's so, right. So we were doing it long before all this, you know, all this rubbish. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, that was probably, you know, it was a more efficient system, probably. Yeah. Corona, yeah. corona bottles, I used to do, I remember, right? Because I used to take the corona bottles back and that'd be my pocket money. And then I'd buy sweets then with the 10 pence per corona bottle I get back. Well, yeah, but the corona, of course, for, for our uh, lovely uh, listeners and viewers, was a was a, uh, a soft drink make. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rather than, rather than the, the the five point seven percent lager that um, they now contain. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. see, they, they they've been upcycled from from um, you know from cherry aid to uh, to lager. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Tequila flavor, yeah, <laughs> lager. Yeah. Not that I drink that crap, but no. Oh, I like Corona. Don't mind a Corona. All right, then, mate. So you've got a new single coming out in the new year? New single coming out uh, early January. Um, it was it was uh, uh, originally destined to be Christmas Eve, which I thought was quite nice. But, um, the, again, with the way the world is, there's a, a, a six-month backlog at the pressing plants. So um, the best we can do for everybody is promise it for uh, early January. It's called A New Heartbeat. There will be an accompanying video um, for that track. Um, it's, a, it's a Digipack CD. Um, as far as I know, it's not going to be available on download, and we've done that on purpose. Cool. Um, so, you know, so, so people can concentrate on buying the actual, you know, the product and the artwork and all that kind of stuff, which we're very proud of. Okay. Um, it it will in time become a download, but not you know not not initially. Okay. Um, and then um, I'm hoping um, February March I'll be recording my guitar tracks for the new album. Um, and um, we have a kind of target date of about May June, maybe June for Soren. Hopefully, if you can do it to mix the album and then looking for a, a winter release next year. Oh, okay, cool. perfect. All right, cool. Good. Oh, good. Very um, good. And, and some, uh, not some. Uh, they're, they're all bit. They're, they're all big, big tracks, big new tracks. Um, very excited for the, for, for the world to hear what, what what we've created this time. Yeah, yeah, cool, man. Oh, yeah, good. can't wait to hear it. Yeah, I mean, listen to some of your other stuff, and uh, it's all all pretty good. So yeah, it's good stuff, no? it's Yeah. Good. All right, and so then you'd be looking to tour the album then, twenty twenty three, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, hundred oh, percent. Um, <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you know, when Ritual came out in two thousand nineteen, we did three shows to promote yeah. that album be, be, before the world went crazy. Yeah, you know, with with, with the flu virus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's kind of... a bit more than the flu. I mean, if if you're lucky enough not to have caught it, then uh, have you caught it? I, I I had it a year ago. Oh, okay. But l- luckily, it just walked past my nose. I had no, I didn't lose any taste or smell or yeah. um, you know, uh, uh, anything at all. Or my family was 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 quite ill with it. Okay. Um. And you know, um, I'm lucky enough to have my daughter live um three doors away from us. You know, in our street. Um, she has three kids. Um, so. Her and her husband uh, and the two girls all tested positive. Oscar, my grandson, who's thirteen, tested negative. Yeah, Man, yeah, I know. yeah, yeah it's a weird one. In the same house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And has and has never had it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's got good antibodies then. Yeah, yeah bloody, bloody good antibodies. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is crazy. It's the same. My, my daughter-in-law to be has got it now, and um, my son's tested negative every single day. He's still going to work making beer. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so he's he's not at it. It's mad, isn't it? It's just how it selects people. It's um, it's crazy. Like you had a really rough day, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I was really ill. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right, were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. So. It's, but, it's scary, your stuff. What, what about the rest of the family? 
Um, I had it. My girlfriend had it. Uh, my daughter d d didn't get it. She stayed with her mother at the time. Okay. And uh, yeah, but I'm still recovering. I'm, I'm. I've got like long COVID now. Oh God, have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really bad because it, it basically what it did to me. It reversed all my uh, oxygen saturation. The way my oxygen saturation levels worked. Okay. And the way they're supposed to work is when you're in rest, your oxygen saturation levels go up. And then when you exert yourself, they go down. Yep. But when I caught COVID, for some reason, it works in reverse. And my when I was in rest, my oxygen saturation levels were going down. And then when I got up, they would go up. So I would be resting because I was ill, obviously. And I felt ill. But then my OS levels would go down. And then I would get even more ill. And I was on the brink of being hospitalized. And, um, yeah, I was... I was rough, man. But then the after effects from it, I mean, because it, it took all my strength away. And, it, yeah, it just, it's taken me seven months to get any, I'm probably now about 50% better than I was. Well, oh, well, I, I, so, yeah. <laughs> it's not to be taken lightly. Well, for me anyway, no, so. Uh, no, absolutely. And, and, and so the, the, do you have a long-term prognosis? Is it, is it going to get better? Have they said that? It is getting better, yeah, because I am definitely getting stronger and stuff every day. So, right, okay. Because I do physio two times a week. I have to go to the the, the gym and everything. You know. So, uh, yeah, we're getting there. Wow. It's going up. Right, okay. So, everything's good. It's going in the right direction. That's what we'll say. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, if by any slim chance that we do come to Holland, um, yeah. please um, let Keep me know. Away from you. <laughs> 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 Keep our long COVID in your eggs, mate. <laughs> Please let me know and I'll put you on somebody else's guest list. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. playing down the road. <laughs> yeah. Well, before we wrap this up, going back to things that people are not supposed to say, did you see that post by Adrian Vandenberg today? I mean, we all know where Adrian Vandenberg is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He made a, a quite a comical post today on Instagram and Facebook. People who eat bacon are less likely to blow themselves up. So I, I, I agree with that. I eat bacon. <laughs> I don't think I'll blow myself up. Exactly. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So... I'm, I'm, I'm quite a pigs in blankets fan. I have to say. Yeah. Oh, you're not going to blow yourself up anytime soon, then. Uh, uh, no, no, no. That's that's like a double dose, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's, right. <laughs> that's like a really big pill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So good old Adrian Vandenberg. All right, yeah. mate. Good to speak to you. You too. And good luck with your uh, with your new stuff coming out. Okay. We'll post all the links on the video when we release it. We'll also release a couple of your songs on the in this track. Okay. And uh, yeah, Hope, hopefully you, you can get over sooner rather than later. Um, please, please, if 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 there is anybody up there in the clouds listening, uh, can you just you know make something happen so all the musicians can start and earn a living again mm. yeah yeah um yeah gosh um it's been an absolute pleasure uh, thank you very much for inviting me no, no problem man. Having on, Rob. Uh, and I, would, I would you know i would come back in a blink of an eye if if, 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 if that's allowed that is yeah. that's more than allowed don't go away yeah. before i uh not you not you rob don't click off when i click off no problem all right thanks guys and uh we'll speak to you again okay and, thank you very, uh, thank you very much keep just chops in <laughs>